it's a hiker crossing. I don't think those tiny backpacks are representative of the real thing. So the problem bear didn't disappoint last night. There were about 40 people in the shelter camped all around down the trail. Here it is, the 24-hour New York Deli slash Shell Station. I've made it this far. Really doesn't make sense to give in to the stresses now, that's for sure. And it's dinner time near Cloud Pond Lean To. Here's Yelp. Hey, uh. We're all camped in different spaces. Always a good time, I think, to pull out the map. Started down here in Georgia, and here I am up here in New Hampshire. But boy, that's a long way to go, but there is still a lot of the trail left. All of New Hampshire, all of Maine. It's gonna be a hard one. So my number is 2,373. That many people are ahead of me going northbound on the 18 unless they've quit already. Still though, I think that April, April 21st, 22nd, I think that's a pretty traditional start date. Earl Schaefer, the first through hiker, didn't start until April. Grandma Gatewood, uh, Emma Gatewood, she didn't start her through hike until May. The uh, second through hiker, Gene Espy, he started his through hike on the last day of May. Is the heater working? Is the heater working? There's no heater in here. This is the oldest shelter on the AT, built in 1934. But there aren't a lot of people that stay here because you have to have a bear canister this time of year in order to use Blood Mountain Shelter and AT through hackers. Don't carry bear canisters. They just carry food bags. Blood Mountain is the highest point in Georgia on the AT. I could probably rattle off the elevation, but I'm not going to because it probably wouldn't mean a lot to anybody unless you climb a lot of mountains. And if you did climb a lot of mountains, then you would hear the elevation and you would say, that's no mountain. Nonetheless, it's the highest point in Georgia on the AT. Neil Gap. I'm going to go into mountain crossing and do some race supply. It was closing up last night when I got here, so I stuck around. Frogtown Gap, this place used to be called until Mr. Neal built the highway. He was the chief engineer that built the high th highway through this gap. Uh, that was in the 1920s. Ever since, it's been Neal Gap or Neal's Gap. Both are correct. Somebody here had an unfortunate washout. I guess it was so bad that they had to leave their tent. It's another ghost camp. This one's worse because there's a whole bag of food here. Why would somebody leave this here for the bears? Anybody lose a food bag? This is my setup for the evening. The wind's coming from this direction. It's actually starting to rain again, but I don't think it's going to last very long. And I'm pretty close to the shelter, which is over there. Some tent sites and so forth on the other side of the trail. I couldn't pawn the food off on anybody. Some of them were already aware of it and had gone through it and decided it was too wet, but whatever. Indian Grave Gap at 1025. And down below, somebody's cooking. 
Now this is true trail magic. I'm getting rid of this food bag in this trash bag. And I'm happy to be rid of it. What do you call it? Pretty sure it's Neil Gap. Neil's Gap. See, there you go. These are, these are locals. <laughs> Thank you all. Oh, not You're a very problem. Welcome. Well, I'm headed down to Dix Creek Gap where I'm going to resupply at the Tapa Georgia Hostel. And I'm eating breakfast on the trail, which is something that you can do when you don't use trekking poles. And there's another purpose today. I have to get rid of all my food before I resupply. So this is my resupply to last me about four or so days to NOC where I'll resupply again. Um, I'm emphasizing fat over sugar. I also have the olive oil. I have a big container of olive oil because it's hard to find anywhere. It's a very condensed form of calories. You don't have any water added to it like you probably do with some of these other products. So it's all nutrients. And uh, I have a little bit of sugar. I'll eat these cliff bars during the day slowly as I hike. I made it to North Carolina. That's the sign that indicates that and up here under the rock is my friend Buckles. Another point of interest that's Wyabald. So I'm on Siler Bald looking over at Wyabald. Here's a view from the top of the fire tower looking off north right in the center of the picture is Lake Fontana and then to the right of that is the big peak the biggest peak to the right of that is Klingman's Dome so why through hike more to the point maybe why am I through hiking well I'm a backpacker and the AT is a long and difficult trail so there's that simple I went a little bit further than I intended today. I'm about 10 miles from Fontana Dam. I'm just beyond Hogback Gap. And I got a view on one side of the ridge and a view towards Fontana Dam on the other side of the ridge. I climbed up on a hill out just past Hogback Gap. The trail is way down there somewhere. So this is Fontana Lake and I'm crossing the dam which was built in the early 1940s as part of the World War II war effort. Under the lake, somewhere, is one of five concentration camps set up in the 1830s by General Winfield Scott to contain Cherokee Indians in North Carolina as part of the Trail of Tears. Some of the Cherokee hid out in the hills and cabins and blended in with their neighbors who we now sometimes call the Southern Highlanders. They eventually became the Eastern Band of Cherokees who are still here in the area in the town of Cherokee and the surrounding region just down the mountain from Newfound Gap. There's a great museum in Cherokee. If you're interested, you should visit. Time to head out. Some of these old forest trees can stand for decades dead before they fall over and then take decades to decay. I arrived at Devil Spring Gap Shelter. I'm going to stay tonight and it's full. People are setting up tents and it means I can camp outside. So I'll show you my setup in a second. Shelter's over there where I'm pointing through the trees. I set up in this little, I don't know, little forest. The small trees down on the ground. This is the bug vivi. The bug vivi with both sides tied up at both ends. And if it were going to rain, I'd put a tarp on top of that. This trail up to Clayman's Dome has got to be the best ever. This is a spruce fir forest. They only occur at very high elevations, mostly in the Smokies, I think. Unfortunately, the fir trees are mostly dead, like this one, due to a 
beetle infestation that kills the fir trees. The view from Clemens Dam, y'all. Too bad it's a little bit hazy. Highest point on the trail. So surely it's all downhill from here, right? I bet somebody else has already said that. Here at Nifton Gap, this is the place right here where Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, dedicated the park back in 1940 for the permanent enjoyment of the people. Here's the famous sign at Newfound Gap that has the mileage to Katahdin. AT hikers are advised not to look at this sign too closely. And now after eating lunch with some of my friends, I'm making my way up to Charlie's Bunyan, which is the next major milestone on the AT in the Smokies. 2.45 and I'm close to Charlie's Bunny and it's right over my shoulder. I'm headed that way. The views aren't extraordinary today because it's so hazy. It's Mount LeCant right there. There's a trail called the Boulevard Trail that goes over to the top of Mount LeCant where there's a shelter and also a lodge. If I got on the highway right here, 40 West, I'd be home in Nashville in just four hours. Home sweet home. I'll be home eventually. In a few days though, I'll be around Hot Springs. And after Hot Springs, it's all new to me as far as hiking goes. I'm getting off the trail now to go to Standing Bear Farm and Hostel where I'm going to resupply and spend the night. When I set off, it was raining just a couple minutes ago, but it stopped, I guess, temporarily. Got to put my umbrella away. Today's interesting destination is Big Bald. We're looking at the Bald Mountains and the tallest one is Big Bald from a distance of 4.5 miles. That's where I'm headed. I've reached the edge of Big Bald. I can't believe I'm here. It looks so far away. Not too long ago, but one thing I've learned on this trip is mountains always look, appear a lot further away than they actually are. 5,516 feet. It's the highest point on the Appalachian Trail between the Great Smoky Mountains and the Rhone Highlands that are coming up. So the highest point for 148 miles. And uh, yes, it's a little stormy, but no rain right now. That's my lav mic. A little noisy. And here's how it sounds, just as windy with my lav mic. Man, it's really windy. I'm about to get blown off of this mountain. Can't hold the camera steady. All right, heading down. Well, I made it to Irwin. I resupplied at Uncle Johnny's for about a day and a half. I ate some food there, looked at my guidebook, and set out again. Now I have a lot of climbing for probably the next day and a half or so. A significant milestone here, I'm at Dow Flats. Significant because at this point I leave finally the Tennessee, North Carolina border and venture into Tennessee proper for a couple days until I get to Virginia. It's probably a good time to bring out the map. 
So I started down there at Springer Mountain. I've been through Hot Springs. Now I'm almost to Damascus, but there past Irwin, there's a little spot where I leave the border and I go into Tennessee. That's where I am now, and I'll be at Damascus in a few more days on Friday. Here's the whole trail. Haven't gone very far yet, have I? Just a little while ago, I met Liz. Her trail name is Handstand. She was hiking with Ivy Tat for a little while. And uh, talked to her about her latest video where she's taking a break from YouTube because of some mistreatment that she's been getting in the comments. And we talked about that. Um, but she plans, I think, to keep doing videos. The trail Day's party starts early before you get to Damascus. Here's trail magic. Competing trail magic. Okay, I told you the party starts early. Here's Hike Hunter and Loner. I'm now the bearded groundhog. The bearded groundhog, all right. We got Pepsi. All right, we have some trail magic going on. Do you guys want to all introduce yourselves? I'm D2. I'm Callie. I am the bearded groundhog, formerly Hike Hunter. I'm Loner. We all know him. And that's Handstand. <laughs> and that's Evan. <laughs> Trail days have been a hit so far. I replaced the hip belt on my backpack, sent it home, bought a new backpack. I got my feet washed. And best of all, I went to the food city and I got strawberries, cantaloupe, an apple, and a whole thing of uh, cherry tomatoes. I ate all those, so I am feeling very healthy right about now. It's a parade! <laughs> Cruising the creeper trail, man. This is an AT hacker. Are we busting him or something? Well, you know, I had a day off and uh, I figured I needed to be on a trail. And this trail requires no walking, no pedaling, only braking. <laughs> Highly recommend it. <laughs> so I'm done hiking for the day. I'm camping near uh, the place where the Virginia Creeper Trail and the AT run contiguously together for a little ways and near a railroad trestle and some water with some other hikers, it's a cool place. Coming up into a cloud here. First phone service in about two days. Everybody's congregating. Hi, Pony. He ran right up to you. He wants to be on YouTube. Turns out that bear got six bags. Two earth sacks and four regular food sacks. That's from the hikers coming up behind us. And that's incredible. These ponies every year are rounded up by a volunteer Cowboys, they have their health checked, and if the herd's too big, the excess is sold at auction.
increase my resupply for three and a half days, it's probably 3,300 calories a day if I can eat this much. In the parking lot of the Travel Inn, I think this whole thing is filled with hikers. New hat, I got this at Walmart. I don't like it, they didn't have a big choice, but Tennessee hat's going home. It's way too dirty. I'm gonna get a new hat as soon as I get a chance. We got a pickup coming in about nine o'clock, something we worked out yesterday with some local guy. A little late for me to get started, but what I'm finding out is when you hike with a group, you gotta make compromises. So, I'm doing my best. I really am. And uh, this morning for breakfast, and really over last night for dinner, I, I had some fresh stuff. Some apples, some uh, tomatoes. I get off the YouTube, you haul again. <laughs> Ivy Ted over there, photo bombing my uh, my video. Brad showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the trail. This is tool time, who was at Thomas Knob Shelter the other day, and he is the owner of a white bear resistant ursac that got swiped, and here it is. People were demanding proof, and now we have it. The ursac ripped open by the bear in Thomas Knob Shelter. Five forty seven point five. One fourth of the AT down and I wanna get some reaction here. Ooh. From the gang. Oh. Oh. <laughs> reaction? I'm excited, I feel accomplished, I feel confident, but I don't want it to be over. That's handstand, also known as Liz. And Luke? Wonderful. <laughs> Feeling good. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> I got a couple more sketches that I posted on Instagram. There's my tarp, and then over here, that's a through hiker named Wander set up at mile 544. Trash can on the trail, which is cool, but please no deer carcasses. I have my new hat I bought yesterday. It says Virginia forever, which you should read as Virginia takes forever on the AT. By the way, Virginia isn't flat and it has a lot of rocks. There's a real sense of we're all in this together and everybody's made it this far and is sort of in it for keeps. There aren't really any pretenders anymore left on the trail. It's evening now. I stopped along a pretty creek and set up my tarp. This being Virginia, after I had the tarp set up, it rained for an hour. And I'm nervous setting out today and it's almost like I'm waking up in the morning to do a marathon. I'm that nervous. and. I can't explain that except that thinking about the miles coming up, all the miles, is uh, not a good thing to do. I don't recommend it. You kind of got to take it day by day. That right there is the sign that says Spy Rock. And it's point one off the trail and it's an excellent 360 degree view in all directions. According to Gut Hook's butt, it's raining and foggy. And so, not worth the time today, unfortunately. 
I'm gonna have to hike the AT again next year, I guess. Some exciting is gonna happen today, even though it's still Virginia, because as you know, Virginia goes on forever. That's right, it's Shenandoah National Park. Kind of looks like the rest of Virginia so far. Black Rock Shelter, or hut as they call them here in Shenandoah. And it was 21 miles to get here, something like that. And another six miles to find more camping. You have to camp in designated camping areas. There hasn't been any water for the last 12 miles, so it was pretty much stopping here was the best option. This is my through hiker friend Oscar, trail name Oscar. Hey. And he's got the, a setup that's more minimal than mine is that I saw a few weeks ago and I wanted to film it. So. Go away! Go away, bear! Go! And the corridor of the park itself is generally, usually, just a mile or two wide, which might be why you tend to see a lot of bears, or some people do anyway, in Shenandoah National Park. There are also some restaurants along the way called Waysides, and I'm about to hit the first one after 28 miles, the Loft Mountain Wayside, and hopefully I can get a shake and a burger. Then I, I, I also was a long distance runner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I ran 10 marathons. My best marathon was main course, uh, three hours and two minutes when I was almost 60. <laughs> oh, like first day. <laughs> We're coming up on mile 900, and I know because I came all the way up here yesterday to call Andrew and Sam. And I saw the mile marker, so I've already been here. And here it is, 900 miles. The bugs are bad at this campsite. It's the worst it's ever been. And the bug bites on my feet from the last week or so. It's just terrible. Scratched and scratched. Nothing inside yet. Nice place. Surprised they let hikers in here. Hello? Hey guys, how you doing? Good job, y'all. And now it's on to breakfast. It's pine needles today, much preferable to the rocks of yesterday. Spoke too soon. These big downhills with sharp rocks are hard on everybody's feet. So there's a film crew here at the wayside walking around with a giant camera. Where are you from? I'm from Massachusetts. And why are you doing the trip? Good question. <laughs> um, I had never been backpacking before and I started getting into hiking a little bit and um, like a challenge. What has been the most difficult thing? All the rain. <laughs> it's rained a lot. It was cold rain in the beginning, especially through the Smokies. Here's the map. I'm almost out of Virginia. So that means I've done all this part of the trail and here's what's coming up, all these states up here. Stay tuned. So I heard that the AT changes a lot as you head north, a lot more traffic, a lot less solitude, and that you just have to deal with it and learn to accept it or you'll have a miserable time. There's some traffic over there headed into Front Royal, very close to Front Royal, Virginia. Heading north on the trail, 
doing a 22 mile day today and an 18 tomorrow, kind of big days, in order to reach Bears Den Hostel, where we're gonna meet my daughter Lydia, and she's gonna hike with us for four or five days. And uh, how about you guys? You hiking naked today? Obviously. Big crowd in the shelter. <laughs> how did yours hold up? Um, our tent held up okay, a little bit of water. Anybody hiking naked today? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> right as you leave. It's Lydia. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Dad. Fist bump. <laughs> Luke and Liz. <laughs> <laughs> The AT's tiniest shelter. I love you, but you're going forever on the AT. It's the big dramatic hat turn. West Virginia, here I come. I'm not turning the hat back until I get a new one. Morning. I haven't had a chance to wear my sunglasses lately, so wearing them in protest of the rain. You know. Why does anybody hike the Appalachian Trail? It's just a crazy thing to do. Starting with the fact that it rained all day yesterday, it rained all night, and everything is wet again and smells bad. Now, I like it, personally, but I can't understand why there's anybody else out here on the trail with me. It's just crazy. Well, the rain's holding off, it's just dripping from the leaves, so maybe I'll change the soundtrack. We're coming down the trail here into Harper's Ferry and there's this giant river over there. It's raging and brown and it's the Shenandoah River. Like in the John Denver song, I guess. Shenandoah River. That's it. <laughs> so here it is, the ATC, the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. They call this place, which is just a little bit off the trail, the spiritual halfway point. It used to be located in Washington, D.C. It moved here in 1972. Alright, what's the cost? The cost for you is going to be $21.82. Alright, I get the ATC member's discount and I got a new hat. New hat, I'm going outside to have my picture taken. I will drop here. It's a hiker lounge. These are books of hiker pictures. Down here. 1979, 1981. Let's pull out one of these. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and I guess her friend, who was it, Alex or something you were saying? That was in the shelter. This is Towns Inn over here. This is where we're staying tonight. Yeah, yeah. 
Luke and Liz are down here. I'm sure uh, already here ahead of us. I got the camera in your face again. You making a big bonfire? Yeah, I'm collecting firewood. <laughs> so as far as I've gotten. Oh, oh, that's a <laughs> good job. Good job, Liz. This is where the pickup's gonna happen up here at a parking lot, just off the AT. Hi. All right, Sarah Lydia. Hi, Dad. Uh, let's fist bump and then on the video and then hug in real life. Okay. Coming up on the shelter that's famous for having flowers. We don't really have to run now, but it's more dramatic if we do. <laughs> I'm just practicing. Eleven hundred. So we're coming up on the Pine Grove General Store, which is a place where the half gallon challenge takes place. That's where you can eat a half gallon of ice cream since you've made it halfway. I'm participating. You did it yesterday. Oh, yeah. I'm participating. You get it? You get it? Regret. Coffee. <laughs> This is my half gallon challenge. This is suicide. This is so bad. This is a bad idea. <laughs> do you want a bite? Now to do the half gallon challenge, they also have to eat an additional pint. Oh man, that made me. <laughs> is anybody going to eat the additional pint? <laughs> I Fuck feel no. better. <laughs> what kind of ice cream would you like me to go get? Vanilla. It's called, it's called crazy vanilla. Crazy That's really vanilla. good. Yeah, What's crazy about, about it? <laughs> <laughs> I asked for vanilla and she started putting that. We're at a half an hour. It took me an hour ten. No, we're at 40. Sorry, I'm taking so long. I'm going as fast as I can. I want to be in the field for booty dubbing. You're definitely going to be I feel like a million bucks. Well done. <laughs> Yay! I went swimming in that lake. It's the only hiker that I saw. I went all the way over to the very deepest part, came back, and now it's time to hike some more. I feel like I'm on the Chateau Trace now. Morning. By the way, there's a heat wave in the northeast going on right now. High today is supposed to be 96 degrees, and a lot of the day is like this. So yeah, it's hot even though I'm carrying my shade with me. So are these the vicious rocks of Pennsylvania? Well, I don't know, maybe it's the start, but I'm still able to walk on them like nothing, and we've had these everywhere. Rocks like these. Okay, this looks like it's something, but still, it's just a bunch of fun. You just walk on them, even though it looks intimidating. It's not, and it's looking a little worse up here. I'm approaching something called Knife's Edge, which I don't know what it is exactly. It's not the nice edge at Mount Katahdin, obviously it's a different one. 
and I'm still about a mile away. So this is the preliminaries, I guess. And this is it. You walk along the edge here on boulders. Now there's a view off to the right. It's the climb out of Lehigh Gap and 36 miles to New Jersey. I'm headed up that way. Andrea asked me if the hike so far has been more physically demanding than I thought it would be. And uh, I'd say day to day, no. Day to day I feel often like I could go further or I should be going further each day. But I think that it would be impossible because, uh, you know, if I do a string of long days, I really feel beat up. Pennsylvania! New Jersey! Look at that New Jersey view over my shoulder. I'm headed up there because there's a guy in the fire tower and he works there. So what we do is from the on the map, the two towers, we run it out to the other leg of the triangle, the triangulation. Mm. And, uh, that's the first time I've ever had two dogs at once in the tower. I've had a lot of, yeah, on the weekends, a lot of folks. So that was Bob, the keeper of the fire tower. There was a ridge runner named Outlaw who was up there. Road crossing. Actually, I'm gonna turn left. There's supposedly a tavern. Point two miles this way and they sell stuff like hamburgers and the traffic noise is too bad but sometimes you can just imagine it away back in the woods I'm looking forward to these zero days, not only because I get to see Andrea and Sam, and that's gonna be great, uh, but because it's started to feel lately like I'm on a treadmill. Get up every day, walk, walk, walk. It's so much fun that we're all finally back together again for a couple of days. We went to four states, New Jersey and New York and Connecticut and Rhode Island. Rhode Island was kind of unplanned. We went to the beach, stayed right there on the beach in a motel and got to do a little walking on the beach and relaxing in the hotel with a lot of sand on the floor. We got to eat a couple meals with Luke and Liz even though they were taking zeros on a different itinerary here we are just before setting off again into the woods back to new york and all the hugs we all got to know each other really well it was really a very good time although sad when i had to turn around and wave goodbye to andrea and sam here's a little ladder up here goes up that was fun except i dropped my camera on the way up Still seems to be working. It's a thunderstorm coming to welcome me back to the AT while I'm climbing on boulders in New York. It's a big one, too. Overlooking the Hudson River, and right here, although it won't show up in the camera, is Manhattan skyline I can see really clearly from here a late start this morning because the zoo doesn't open till 10 
And you know, of course, that the AT goes through a zoo. It's the only rattlesnake I've seen on the trail so far. Bridge over the Hudson River. I think I said around Front Royal, Virginia, that it gets very noisy and the trail changes as you come further north. And it actually has been really bad in Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey. As long as you're aware of that, it's fine, but it's not a wilderness experience necessarily. Interstate 87. This is Mountain Goat coming to you from just outside New York City. Now we've had a great time coming through some beautiful, beautiful country down here. Now you guys have a lot to look forward to. You're going to go into Connecticut and it is stunning how much... They say that southbounders are very different from northbounders. <laughs> We're in a cab with Hike and Tell. Hello. Look at that. And we're going to Wingdale. They're going to Pauline. So here's the motel. It's a Duchess Motor Lodge. Let me show you around. That's it. This is around. Outside. It's raining. You know, about my uh, nervousness at hotels and feeling like I can't go on. You know, I just think I can go 20 miles today and then I'll worry about the next day and the next day. And I'm going to be positive. Julio's taxi service. <laughs> Coming up to the big tree. You all ready to head into Connecticut? <laughs> so this is why they call her Poppins. <laughs> but I got my umbrella too. Nice. Supposedly thousands of people walk on the AT every year, but it doesn't keep the plant life from taking over the trail. The end of the corridor, I've now in the <laughs> This is how they hiked the AT in the 1800s. <laughs> Getting it. It's a whole body pump right there. <laughs> Welcome to Connecticut. Gateway to New England. Walking along the Housatonic River again, just like yesterday. Okay, forget what I said about the summit of Bear Mountain. About 100 feet down the trail, there's this. I think this might be the summit. Don't worry, I'm coming up too. The view. Beautiful. I gotta say, the Sages Ravine section is really cool, even in the rain. And uh, no road crossings, no houses. We entered Massachusetts. We're in the clouds. It's a little scary right there. Approaching the road that's going to take us into Lee, Massachusetts, and we're going to stay at the Super 8. So it was Super 8 last night. Y'all familiar with Jason Isabel and his song Super 8? Don't want to die in a Super 8 motel just because somebody's evening didn't go so well? Good song. Well, we went to dinner with a guy who is going to help us out named Brian. And thanks, Brian. That was fun having dinner with you. Trailblazer from Wisconsin, a flip-flopper who started in Virginia, went north to Pennsylvania, and then you went to? 
Katahdin, now I'm southbound, so I'm almost 1,200 miles. I'm more than halfway finished. And New Hampshire is as beautiful as people say? New Hampshire is very pretty. It wasn't as hard as Southern Maine. I almost quit in Southern Maine. It was really hard. These random lakes that pop out out of nowhere are really cool. There it is, Mount Greylock. That's going to be tomorrow or the next day. Zooming out to where I am. Even more, and it disappears. You can go up there. He's you out, it doesn't matter. A little roadside trail magic here. You guys started in Georgia? Yeah. And I got a through hiker beer. Isn't that awesome? This is a big deal. Welcome to Vermont. So for about 100 miles, by the way, I'm hiking on both the AT and Vermont's Long Trail. The Vermont's Long Trail, the Long Trail is the nation's oldest hiking trail. It opened for business in 1921, before the AT. February 25th, yeah, and what's your trail name? Stumbles. Stumbles. I think it's I'm sure. Right? She just finished, and she yeah. they oh, brought yeah. us some donuts. You guys can look for Watermelon. my name in the logbook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. This is Yelp, everybody's favorite through hiker. <laughs> what are you drinking? I'm drinking a mocha. He's saying mocha. Mocha. And uh, he's from England, is that right? Yeah. Whereabouts? Southwest, think so. And I have trouble understanding him. And I hope that's not offensive. He he sounds like one of the Beatles to me. He taught me how to say water. Wa-e. wa -e. Is that is that pretty good? That was good. <laughs> Setting out today from Bennington, Vermont, with a group that stayed last night at the Naughty Pine Motel. No glass up here. And it's windy. And it's wet. We're in the clouds. The floor's wet. But it's a lunch spot nonetheless. 12 miles to get into Rutland. That's where I'm going to go to the urgent care and get tested for Lyme disease. I've had a fever for two days. Haven't been able to eat. Really tired. Everything's sore. Sweating. Night. Man, it's no fun hiking with a fear, I'll tell you that. It's about the worst thing that I can think of. Umbrella's out. Vermont has been very wet and very muddy. Here's what it's like hiking in the mud in Vermont after the rain. So day 106 for me was a zero. I'm not feeling that much better. Still have the night sweats. Still don't have an appetite and I haven't eaten much for four days, but I don't have a fever. That's good. First big climb today is going to be up to Killington Peak. That'll be up over 4,000 feet. Hey. Hey, mate. Hope you didn't miss a 500 mile sign. It's a spur trail to Killington Peak, 0.2 miles. It's real steep, I heard, but I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, this trail is steep. I came from somewhere down there. We got a view now. And I'm going up there. I think there's a lodge down here, this direction. It's called the Peak Lodge. Hey, look who's here. Here it is, I'm leaving the Long Trail. Long Trail goes north to Canada and the AT goes right, north to Maine. Goodbye, Long Trail. I apologize for dissing you when you were raining on me and I was sick. Uh, a couple days to reach New Hampshire, which is exciting, and then Mount Musilak will be within the week. 
the first mountain in the whites. The ladder on the trail. Here it is a lookout, and there's actually a perch on the top of the roof. It's awesome up here. I'm up. Yeah. Storm from that direction. Yeah, I saw a bit of fault lightning. Glad I made it to the lookout when I did. So the Lyme test came back negative, so I have some other problem. I've been hiking through all this, and I'm on schedule, my schedule. But I think I should probably slow down at some point and regain my strength. I'm going to be at Hanover in a couple days. That might be a good place to take a break for a while until I get my appetite and my strength back. Here's the bridge over the Connecticut River. When I reach the other side, I'll be in New Hampshire. Well, I did it. I'm in New Hampshire. I have to say I'm quite overjoyed. And hey, if you're one of those people that have been telling me for months, just wait until you get to New Hampshire. Well, I'm here. And last week, the wheels almost fell off the bus, and they still might. So keep watching. See what happens. First setup in New Hampshire. No chance to rain tonight. A little chance. I'm just using the bug movie. I got a stream down there. Nice. Little housekeeping. Days 113 and 114 were zero days. I took them in Plymouth, New Hampshire. I did the responsible thing and I went to the hospital and I got some good medical advice and I was there most of a the day and they did a bunch of tests. Anyway, at the time I spent in the hospital, uh, I think I was on the uh, uptrend. Here I am on the summit of Mount Musilak and I'm glad to be here even on a blah day and even in catch up mode. I'm two days behind my group that I've been hiking with for so long but I think I'll catch them. This is Lonesome Lake Hut. Huts are places in the whites where you can buy a bunk for $100 or $150. They're usually already reserved by the time you get there. Sometimes through hikers are allowed to stay there for free if they agree to do some work. It's called work for stay. Maybe wash dishes, maybe give a little lecture to the other guests about your through hike. Sort of ironically, I'm in the whites alone. Ironically, because before this hike started, I told Andrea, although I don't know if I'll hike with others, I do think that in the whites, uh, I, don't, I don't want to do that part alone. So now here, ironically, I'm in the whites alone. And really, it hasn't been too bad. Uh, I feel really confident about it. I think that the two long solo backpacking trips that I did in the past two years have prepared me well for this. It would, would have been nice though to be with Liz here in this part. She and Luke are two days ahead of me. Liz has hiked a whole lot in the whites and very enthusiastic about being here. She knows a lot of side trails and places to camp and she's been through the presidentials. And that would have been helpful in kind of planning my way through. And I don't have that, uh, but as I said, my confidence is high, it's working out. I'm gonna catch up with them eventually and I'm looking forward to that, but that's probably not gonna be until after the whites. Had a little breakfast at Gale Head Hut. It was free, leftovers. I got there just about 8.30. And now I'm headed up South Twin Mountain, the very steep South Twin Mountain. And after that, I don't know, I'm gonna go as far as I can today. Most of the trails in the whites are like this, with lots of rocks and roots. And I always thought people were saying you'd slow down in the whites because of the elevation, but it's as much because the trails are hard to get any rhythm on. You 
you can't go real fast. That's the trail. I can't give you an idea really how steep it is. And then this is in front of me. And it goes up like that. Well, 17 miles today. I made it to Crawford Notch. I still have three hours of daylight. It's only 5 o'clock. I'd like to keep going. I'm 11 miles from Lake of the Clouds Hut, which is right before Mount Washington. It would be great to be there tomorrow morning somehow or other because I really want to go over to Mount Washington tomorrow. And if I wait until tomorrow afternoon, the conditions might make it impassable. So I kind of need to be there somehow in the morning. And as I said, I'm 11 miles away. Well, I'm going to keep going, see how far I get. Summon a Webster, the first peak in the presidentials. Look over here, I can see my way to Mount Washington, which is right there in the center, the biggest one. That's where I'll be tomorrow. I'm up Jackson, peak number two in the presidentials. Maybe I'll be stopping soon. Hey, I'm night hiking in the presidentials. It's more fun than you might think, and I got great weather for it. Clear skies, it's not too cold. It was a little hard climbing down the rocks off of Mount Jackson in the dark, so I think about I've about had it with going above the tree line tonight. I got another mile and a half to a hut. I could try to get there, or I could stop anywhere really along the trail. I just met a woman coming the other direction who said I wasn't crazy for night hiking in the Presidentials on a nice night like this. She said I could make it all the way to Lake of the Clouds Hut without too much climbing. Just a little bit coming out of Mitzka Hut, which wasn't even bad. So I don't know, maybe I'll keep going a while, unbelievably. The wind's not blowing that hard, and it's not very cold. 10.15, I went to the Mispa Spring Hut, and it was quiet there, but there were a couple of guys eating dinner still, and I talked to them. They'd come from this direction, south, section hikers. They, uh, they confirmed what the woman told me earlier that I could do this hike at night over towards uh, Lake of the Clouds hut and they also said that they saw Luke and Liz and Yelp at that hut so after hiking I don't know 26 miles so far today I've almost caught up with them I'm at the summit of Pierce which is the third peak in the presidentials in the direction that I'm headed. This is as far as I'm going for now until the morning. I've hit the uh, tree line, so it's all above the tree line between here and Lake of the Clouds Hut. And if I want to stop, there's going to be no place to stop, so this seems like a good idea to stop here. I'm just going to take a little nap, a couple hours of sleep. I'm back on the trail. <laughs> hey, turn around. <laughs> 30 miles. <laughs> Heading up Mount Washington. Gang's back together. Behind me, there's Yelp. Right. Lake of the 
the clouds high. I guess the whites is working out for me. It was an idea to get to Lake of the Clouds hut and so that I would make it over Mount Washington and eventually be able to catch up with everybody and it turned out that's where they were and boy it couldn't have worked out any better. It was really fun. I had to go 30 miles yesterday to get to them at Lake of the Clouds hut. I did take a two-hour nap in the middle of the night and then uh 15 miles today, so that's going to be 45 miles total with just that na just that little nap. Uh, probably not the best way to make it through the whites, but fun for me. Also, I don't think I'm sick anymore. The terrain is like this, which requires uh, kind of some difficult balancing. I'm choosing foot placements, and hopefully the rocks don't shift when you step on them. Nothing easy about today. Climbed up that, and that was Madison, the last peak in the presidentials, going the direction that I'm going. Two more miles to Pinkham Notch Visitor Center. I don't think I've ever been more ready to be finished with a day's hiking than today. I can't wait to go to sleep tonight. Pinkham Notch Visitor Center made it. So Yelp, I think the world wants to know why you're hiking the <laughs> AT. Why I'm hiking the AT? Um, quick answer or medium answer. I hiked the Camino de Santiago. Um, I realised what it does, it changes you for the better. And then my dad mentioned about the AT, which I kind of put on a back burner because I thought it was such a big thing, I wouldn't do it. And then I was going to go to India, do yoga, and then nothing was burning, you know, nothing was hitting me. And then I opened a book and it said the Appalachian Trail, and then I got a fire in my heart, and I thought, okay, i got to do it. You and glad you did? Without a doubt, without a doubt, without a doubt. A lot of tough hiking ahead, but I've got a new hat. It says Baxter State Park, which is where I'm headed. Andrea sent it to me. It's break time. Uh. We've been sitting on this rock for a while. And then I noticed right there sharing the rock. There's a snake. We're right out in nature. Look who we found at the top. <laughs> We're at the summit now of Mount Moriah. This is point one off the trail so these are extra trail miles. I'm gonna do this view again with Liz because I screwed it up last time and she has all the know-how, the knowledge. So, that is Mount uh, Washington. With the clouds on it. Uh-huh, and then going over this way. We've got, um, say, uh, the two pointy ones on the end. This one and this one? Yeah, are Adams and Madison. Adams and Madison. These are all the, this is the end of the presidentials going northbound. Yeah. Then we went down this ridge here the other day. And that's the view from Mount Moriah. Well, this is Shield Maiden. She's southbound, and she uh, she has something to say. Hi, Mim. I ran into E Wolf finally, just coming up through the whites now. So should be a good rest of the day. Well, have a good time in the whites. Thank I just you. came through some of them, Mount Washington, and it was a trip. I'm glad to be over it, but you'll have fun. Oh, I'm glad to be going into it. <laughs> so tonight we're in another one of these campsites. 
What's this one called? Um, Trident Call, I think. This is Trident, Trident Call campsite, and they have these earthen tent pads. So, yelp, Luke and Liz. I'm back here in the woods with a strange looking tarp set up. That's serious. <laughs> 1900 miles. Well done, well done. Any words of wisdom? Keep walking. We're heading towards the summit of Mount Success. There's Yelp on the summit. Happy right now. So we're at Mount Success. How much more time left today? How many more miles? Like seven. Seven more miles today. <laughs> and then we, we camp right at the beginning of Mahusik Notch, which seems like it would be a good thing because we can do it in the morning. But it's supposed to be raining tomorrow morning. And already the clouds are starting to look like rain. That means the Mahusik Notch, the hardest mile on the AT, plus the Mahusik Arm, which is a very steep section in the rain. Not good. Bye. Welcome to Maine. You're welcoming me to Maine? Welcome to Maine. What are you, the ambassador? <laughs> Pull me up. I'll stay, guys. Yeah. Bow, bow. Woohoo! It's my first good viewpoint in Maine. I'm looking at Goose Eye Mountain. Those two peaks. I go up over those before I get to the place where I'm sleeping tonight, I think. And I only have four more miles. I don't know how I got over here so quickly, but I don't go all the way up to the top. I see if I zoom in. There's Yelp and Liz and Luke and another hiker. They were waving at me. Now they're a little closer. Now I'm going to turn around. I'm up very high, headed towards Mahusik Notch by myself. I set off really earlier this morning because I wanted to get there. I have to descend down to the notch, but once I'm there, I'm going to wait for the rest of the group to catch up with me, and we're going to do that difficult section together. Here it is, the beginning of Mahusik Notch. And the rain's starting to come down a little bit harder. It's supposed to pick up as we progress through. I'm going to wait here for the rest of the crew. They're probably about a half an hour behind me. Yep, there you go. We made it up Mahusik Arm. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Supposedly one of the toughest climbs on the AT, and it was tough, wasn't it? It was. Here's Luke. Here's Liz. Yeah. That was no joke. I know it was shitty and it was fucking horrible and disgusting. We didn't have a ride into Bethel, Maine. And we found Miss Janet. She's gonna give us a ride. Hi. Hi. Well, here we are, early morning in Bethel, Maine, and we're about to get picked up and taken back to Grafton Notch. Yesterday was a zero day here, great town. We're gonna continue on our way today and have another resupply in Rangeley, Maine in four days. So it'll be four days of hiking, a resupply, and then continue on from there towards Katahdin. Climbing another mountain. And point three from the summit of West Baldpate. And then I go down and back up again to get to East Baldpate. Let's climb up the East Bald Pate Peak. It's a fun one. I came from here down this way and I'm headed up. Here's what I get to see on the way up. Now I have to climb up, 
up up to the top and here's the east peak with the sign that's turned over probably by the weather it was a nice hike up i thought maybe on the way to katad maybe i'll have some wrap-up thoughts start with the gear that i'm using you know i called it unique one time and somebody properly pointed out that i'm not unique at all people have hiked through hiking sandals before seth orme and probably many others people have hiked through hiked with a tarp before ray jardine and probably many others and on and on but you know what i wanted to do i guess was to show that you if you look at facebook and you look at youtube it seems that there's just one way to do a through hike one way to do backpacking one way to do solo backpacking and on and on there's just kind of a set list of gear that you're supposed to have and when I started doing long hikes, I started largely with that set list of gear, although I used a tarp. And I ex began to experiment, and it's much more fun, I think, if you realize that you're not really limited to the things that you hear about most frequently on Facebook and YouTube. Via this morning, the Mount Washington Weather Station said last week that all this haze was being caused by the forest fires in California. So Luke is leaving us for a week. If you watch Liz's videos, you know that Luke comes out for two weeks out of every month. And then he goes back and works a little bit and then comes back out here. This is set up for the night. I might throw up a tarp later. This guy looks a little, eh, I don't know, it's not supposed to rain, but who knows. We're set up without Luke tonight. Of course, Luke has become a very, very good friend over this hike and you know one of the i really like that uh, video that i did about the whites it turned out well but one of the things that was missing from that video was luke's reaction when i showed up at lake of the clouds hut and what happened was i went inside with my camera and saw liz and she jumped up and down and then the uh the crew there that's in charge of the place came out and told us to shut up because we we're making too much noise and the paying customers might have been offended because they could have still been sleeping so we had to be quiet and luke was in the bathroom so I turned my camera off and Luke came out of the bathroom and I didn't get the reaction shot, Luke's reaction shot. So Luke was excited too, but I didn't get to show it. Hi. Hi. Hey. P1, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? Good. Right on. Smashing some calories. But look at this. I've never seen this trail magic. It's a mirror. Oh, you can see how I look. Wow. <laughs> that doesn't fit quite right, but I still like it. And Liz, people have made comments that they think that it's odd that we should be hiking together. We've hiked, I don't know, the majority of the trail together. Initially, we had YouTube in common, and that's a big thing. If you've ever tried to hike with somebody who does YouTube videos, you have to put up with hearing the same thing over and over again as they try to film a section a statement or a couple of sentences I I repeat myself endlessly or you have to say to the person hey could you go in front of me could you go behind me because I want to film something so we had that in common headed towards a road crossing that will take us to Rangeley and a resupply just a five mile day today and we've had Yelp in our group for a month or so and we knew him before, he was hiking with some other people. When Lydia was out, Yelp was around for a little bit, so Lydia has met Yelp. But for the last month or so, he's been hiking with us, and he's another very positive member of the group. We're all pretty positive, which makes hiking together fun. I'm probably the least positive, because we all want to get done, but it seems like I say it more often than anybody else. I still can't really believe I'm in Maine. But you know, Maine is no cherry on top of the hike. It's a hike in itself. It's over 280 miles. Anyway, we're chipping away. Look where I'm at, 2,000 miles. That means I only have about another 190 miles to go. I think you hit that 2,000 miler, you feel like you're, you, you're getting to the end of your journey. So for me, it's quite a, quite a moment. We've been talking about going back to work all day, so. <laughs> 
All day. It's only been 15 minutes. All <laughs> mile and a half that we've hiked so far today. Kennebec River, 17.2 miles, that'll be tomorrow. That's where you take a canoe across. We're at the Kennebec now. The ATC provides a canoe to ferry people across between 9 and 2 o'clock. Godfather in the front. You turn around and say hi. Look at What's that. up? All right. Thanks, Greg. No problem. And from here is two days to Monson, Maine, which is the start of the 100 mile wilderness, which I'm calling the 100 mile used to be a wilderness because it's not really a wilderness anymore. Here's the somewhat outdated sign that everybody films. There are no places to obtain supplies or get help until Abel Bridge, 100 miles north. Do not attempt this section unless you have a minimum of 10 days supplies, etc, etc. There are logging roads all through the 100 mile wilderness and after about the year 2000, even more logging roads. And those logging roads are controlled by the paper companies that have the right to them. But they have gatekeepers they're like toll roads so they open and close and if you have to come out after the gatekeeper is asleep you have to pay an extra fee and there are people who actually will resupply you in the hundred mile wilderness by meeting you at certain road crossings you can get out of the hundred mile wilderness and go stay in a hotel if you hire somebody to do that down here's a little marker 100 miles. Sand Beach down at Crawford Pond. Trail magic in the hundred mile wilderness. Nice. From Purple Haze and the Earl Grace family. Here goes a car. There it is, Nakatadden. It looks like quite a climb, just like they say. Just a couple more miles of hiking today, and then two 20 mile days, and then I'll be at the base of Mount Katahdin, and the next day, summit. Let's take a look at the map. Here's the whole Appalachian Trail. I started down there in the south of Springer Mountain in Georgia. And I've walked all the way north up the trail, and now I'm almost to the end there in Maine. 2,190 miles, something like that, and it's been a long way. I'm headed towards White House Landing, which is a traditional Maine sporting camp. We're going to resupply there. I'm meeting the others there at 1.30. They're behind me because I left early to make sure I made it there on time. Here's Yelp. He just showed up. And Luke and Liz, here's the sign for our place. White House Landing boat pickup. Blah, 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 blah. Complimentary cannabis. Must be 21 years old because we're in Maine. It's legal. What do you think? This is very good. Our little 
cottage. No electricity, but who cares? One shot. So after dinner here last night, and there were some newlyweds staying here who put on a fireworks show, and we took a canoe out on the lake and saw Mount Katahdin. Anyway, so dinner here last night, breakfast here this morning, and now we're going to get back on the boat and go back to the trail and do 19 mile day today. Last big day, 21 miles, which will bring us to the base of Mount Katahdin. And then we'll do Mount Katahdin tomorrow morning. There it is. I keep getting closer and closer. I'm on Golden Road, headed towards the entrance to Baxter State Park, wearing my Baxter State Park hat that Andrew gave me and that I picked up in Pink and Notch. I want to do something pretty quickly here, more for myself than anybody else, which is to recite some, to recite the names of the hikers, the trail names of the people who I've hiked around. There have been many, many who I've spent days hiking around and uh, eventually they went ahead of me or I went ahead of them or whatever. People besides Liz and Luke and Yelp. So I have a list. I'm just going to read these and you can, uh, if you're interested in trail names, maybe get something out of it. But <clears throat> Smokey Denny, Grizz, Big Tuna, Miss Roberts, Frolic, Stretch, P1, Peach, I talked about Peach in one of my videos already, The Godfather, I crossed the Kennebec River with The Godfather, Papa J, Papa Smurf, Brew, Boil Over, Fuego and Squeak, Poppins, Peanut and Great Dane, Kaleidoscope, Big Tuna, number two, Speedy, Red Stripe, Cheddar, TBD, who attached his tarp to my tarp in a downpour in one of the episodes when Lydia was out. My friend Oscar, whose real name is Zach, who appeared in one of my videos. Two Crows, Beats, Happy Feet and Bob Gnarly, K-Star, Ginger Balls, a great guy. I saw him first in the Smokies and saw him all the way through this trip and he was always surrounded by a great group of people and he was always kind of the leader of his gang and his gang changed from time to time with different guys, different gals as they uh, went on to different speeds. And Metric, Kool-Aid, and Scrapbook. And those are some of the many people I've hiked along with. And look at this. Maka Todd and I'm here. How do you feel, Luke? Darn tough. <laughs> yeah, are you keeping warm? Are you excited? Both. It's about time to set out. Hey. Ready? Good. I think I'm ready. <laughs> Only five it. miles. We can do it together. Together. All right. I had to go. Almost above the tree line. Great weather today. About three weeks ago, we upped our daily average so that we would have the option of summoning on today or tomorrow, September 11th. Tomorrow's gonna rain. Today's beautiful. From here we 
go up to that peak and then I think turn right and walk along the ridge. That's really steep. getting really close time for some thank yous of course to all of you who have watched these videos and all of you who have commented on them and a special thanks to those of you who have been commenting on my videos since my Benton Mackay through hike and my Sheltoe Trace through hike thanks to my friends and family uh, who supported me on the hike my mom and dad and brothers and sisters my kids, Lydia and Austin and Zoe and Sam, uh, and especially to Andrea. And believe it or not, I'm going to be driven to Boston tomorrow by Luke and Liz. That's where Yelp's going too. Yelp's going back to England, and I'm going back to Nashville. And I can't wait. And also, finally, thank you to those of you who read the video description and were inspired to contribute to the Appalachian Trail Conservancy or to Bruce Matson's RTK Challenge. And if you don't know about those, what I'm talking about, please read my video descriptions. <laughs> nice job. I'm done. All I got to do is get down from here. And there goes Yelp. <laughs>all there's a little bit more to the story okay let's the big reveal you gotta watch Liz's video if you want to find out more about that the hike is over and Evan's backpacking videos the YouTube channel is over too I'm not gonna be making any new videos but I will be responding to comments, responding to emails. I'm going to keep the videos up. And thank you all.